Welcome to Moonshot Radio with your host, Dr. Nivia Torres. Greetings and welcome to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, also known as KRC. Our vision is that all children in Indian River County will be ready for kindergarten. We proudly partner with the Moonshot Moment, who is transforming the next generation in Indian River County by having 90% of all students reading on grade level by the third grade. With me today in the studio is Vance Alupas. Vance is the CEO of the Children's Movement of Florida. Vance, welcome. Hey, Dr. Torres, how are you? Thank you for coming. Of I'm course. Fine. Great. We're both wearing sweaters because it's a little chilly it's, in Florida. It's freezing. So freezing is relative, but in Florida, it's freezing right now. It's, it's, I, think it's, I think it's 61 outside. So it's freezing for exactly, us. Exactly, yes. It's freezing. I left my jacket in the car. <laughs> yeah. Vance, share with us a little bit about your background and your connection to the children's movement. Of course. Well, first of all, again, thank you for having me. It was a beautiful drive up here. Uh, I love the Treasure Coast. We talked a little bit about it before uh, we started the interview, but um, it's a, this is a really special part of the state, and the work that you're doing and that many of your partners are doing is really second to none in terms of promoting the importance of early childhood education. Um, my background is, is, is really, um, not that typical. You wouldn't, you wouldn't look at my background and say, well, yeah, he's going to go into early childhood, early childhood education. Uh, I'm one of, uh, I'm one of nine children. I was born, uh, 2000 miles North of here in a small town called Bangor, Maine. So I am used to the cold, even though I don't enjoy it. I am used to the cold. Um, and interestingly enough with, with nine children, um, it was my, my closest in age sister, who's now 33. She and I were born with serious health issues. So for the first five, six, seven years of our lives, um, my sister and I were spending a lot of time in and out of hospitals. Uh, ultimately, ended up finding out that um, uh, my sister and I both suffered from severe immune deficiencies. We we're missing proteins in our white blood cell. Mm. And, you know, they were, they were my, my parents were sending us really all over the country. We would spend time at Boston Children's out in Denver. Um, and it was, it really wasn't until the, the early 90s, late 1991, where we had a grandmother who lived in, in Boca. And I, my little joke is that um, every everybody in the Northeast has a grandmother who lives in Boca, and we would visit her uh, during the holidays, and my mom would notice that her two little sick kids would get better. Um, and they made the decision in early 1992 that they were going to move the entire family to South Florida because of the tropical climate, mm. um, because we really were not getting better. And the way I explain it to people is, you know, a young Dr. Torres might get a cold and be sick for a couple of days. I would get that same cold and I'd end up in the intensive care unit. So it was my body really had a, mm. my sister and my both had, had real challenges getting over really any illness. Uh, so we moved here uh, in 1992. Uh, we moved three weeks before Hurricane Andrew, which is not the best time to move mm -hmm. to South Florida, uh, but it was exciting. Uh, needless to say, my, I can remember my, uh, my, my father, who was an OBGYN, who had to stay up in Maine while the, while the storm sort of barreled into South Florida told my mom that uh, she should just put some towels by the door and everything would be okay. So clearly we've seen the damage of Hurricane Andrew. Oh, towels yes. were not sufficient. But um, I, was, I, was, I was blessed to be born into a family that could make such a remarkable decision to move their family 2,000 miles away for the, for the sake of their children. Um, for the next 18 years, my dad would come down every... Th he, he couldn't leave his medical practice. He would come down every Thursday night. He would stay with us Friday and Saturday and he would go back on Sunday. And I've, and I've often found myself thinking, what would have happened if I'd born, been born into a family that, that, that didn't have those blessings, didn't have those opportunities? Uh, what would my life had, had been like? Because I was missing an enormous amount of school because you know, I didn't come down to Florida until I was in, in fourth grade. So kindergarten, first grade, second grade, the years that are really the foundation for all learning, uh, I was missing a lot of it. And you know, to me, I believe that, that you know, our, our common pursuit should be equity for every child, right? And um, the educational continuum, as as we know it, I think for far too long has not included the early childhood years. So I was blessed ten years ago. I I, I practiced law for a few years, but um, have always been passionate about educational equity and and believe that if we're ever going to ensure that every child has the opportunity to achieve whatever dream they may have, um, it, it really begins by giving them that strong foundation. So that is what our organization seeks to do, and that is really the um, you know that is my calling. So would you say then that that is the vision of the children's movement, educational equity? And when was the children's movement founded? So, so our organization was actually founded out of the author, reauthorization of our Children's Services Council. So you have actually two in the Treasure Coast. You have one in Martin County and you have one in, in St. Lucie County. 
Um, and these are special taxing districts that that raise money to reinvest back into the community. Uh, we first passed ours in Miami-Dade County in 2002, and it was brought up for reauthorization in 2008. There was a five-year sunset put onto it. Mm-hmm. And Miami is a very, I want to say, interesting political community. And what you were asking people in 2008 to do was to tax themselves you know, on behalf of the the community's children. Now, if you remember 2008, that was the height of the recession. And I'm sure things were bad in Indian River County. They were terrible in Miami-Dade County. Uh, Miami is a very get rich uh, quick city. It's a get poor quick city, and 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 development and and um, real estate is an, is a major factor in our environment and our community. So you can imagine what the impact was for for our county. And we had to go back on the ballot and ask the 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 citizens of our community con- to continue to to tax themselves on behalf of all children. Uh, and it passed with eighty five point four percent of the vote, which was beyond overwhelming. Mm. And it was out of that reauthorization that David Lawrence, who was our our chairman and a gentleman by the name of Sergio Ben Dixon, um, who was a a really prolific political strategist, said, you know, there's something larger here. Um, If we can educate people enough to understand the importance of early childhood investment, we can really begin to change the narrative of how we invest in education, what education reform looks like, and how we really give every child that opportunity that we would want for our own children. And how does the work that get done, how do you get support to do this work throughout Florida? So, so we're a grassroots organization, and you know we're trying to build a movement. So, you know, you think of the civil rights movement or the mm-hmm. feminist movement, and it's you know you really don't know where you are when you're when you're when you're sort of living in history. And and we believe that at the end of the day, this sort of change can only come from enough people insisting. And you know, unfortunately, and you know this as well as I do, there are, there are, we're we're still at a gap in terms of people understanding the value of early childhood. So while we got involved in this, while I got involved in this work back in two thousand and ten. An enormous amount of our focus as an organization is not only one figuring out ways to to drive public policy and increase investment in early childhood education, but to really just to 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 build the narrative of why this is so important. Um, I oftentimes tell people I, I do a lot of speaking around the state, and I'll and I'll tell folks I'll say, listen, if there's if there's anything you take from my presentation today, if you don't remember any don't remember any of the facts, any of the figures, don't remember any of my funny jokes, just take the word daycare out of your vocabulary. If you, if, if in First of all, daycare is a reality, right? There are places in Indian River County, in Miami-Dade County, in every community across Florida where children go for the day, and the only expectation is that they are safe and healthy. And that is, is, that is absolutely critical. But for so many of the children in your community, in my community, that's not enough. And that if we continue to perpetuate this idea that daycare is sufficient and that we're not insisting upon brain-stimulating early childhood experiences... Then so many of those children that we're that we're seeking to give that that strong foundation are not going to get it, and I think so much of what we're trying to do is to change sort of the social perception of what early childhood education is. Because again, daycare permits us to to pay our childcare teachers nine dollars an hour. Daycare permits us to fund VPK less today than we did fourteen years ago when it first went into implementation. Daycare permits us to to not have any real standards or or. Um, or requirements for um, for our teachers or our programs. So again, a lot of it's about changing perception. And aside from daycare, if we were really to, as you say, change the narrative about early childhood, how can you share a message with folks so that they understand that zero to five matters to everyone? It doesn't necessarily matter to those folks who have little ones mm-hmm. who are impacted by daycare, but it matters to anyone who is a tax paying citizen of course so so you know i think people would say well if you have so i have three little girls i have a seven-year-old a five-year-old and a seven-month-old that's why i look that's why i'm so i look so tired right now um you know i think people would say well he has young children so he cares about this Mm -hmm. when they pass the reauthorization of our children's services council in miami-dade county the highest percentage of, of affirmative voters were people 65 and older which you would say they don't really they probably don't have children at the home they may have grandchildren but why would folks who who don't have any sort of day-to-day interaction with children be so supportive of of a tax on behalf of of children? And the reality is is because they have some wisdom. They know what wise investment looks like. And you know, for us, we believe that, yes, there's a larger narrative of of stressing the importance of this. But I don't think it's just the moral imperative of why you should invest in children. I don't think we've gotten that far on the backs mm. of, you know, we love children. Right. If 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 we love children was sufficient, then you and I wouldn't be having this conversations or wouldn't be in need for a collaborative. Um, you know, we would have reached the promised land and everything would be fine. 
I think you have to make that practical imperative. And for our organization, what we have tried to do is build narratives specific to communities. So there is a, a very practical narrative for the business community. So interestingly enough, in your community, the chair of our local, uh, our local council is the head of your chamber of commerce. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, because childcare, early education is not only a, a requirement for the workforce today, right? You need, you need a place for your child to go so you can go to work. But the children going into kindergarten today is they are the workforce of 2030. So if Indian River County, if the Treasure Coast, if Florida is thinking about how they want to be competitive in a global economy 15 years from now, 20 years from now, they better start thinking about how it, they are raising their children and how they're investing in their children. And those are narratives that you're starting to see really capture the, the I don't want to say the hearts because I think that is, that's the easier side, capturing the minds of, of many of our elected officials and our, and our, and our business leaders. Fans, we're going to take a break to hear from our sponsors, and we will be right back. Welcome to Moonshot Radio with your host, Dr. Nivia Torres. At the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, our vision is for every parent, regardless of income or zip code, to have the knowledge and tools they need to raise healthy children that are prepared for kindergarten. Our mission is to support our partners in developing a high-quality early childhood system that is family-centered. Our outreach and parent engagement specialists connect with families and build trusted relationships. KRC has chosen Felsmere and Gifford as our two focus areas in Indian River County. Our Felsmere office is located downtown in the city annex, and our new Gifford office is located within Victory Park Apartments. Our administrative offices are now located adjacent to Healthy Start and Treasure Coast Community Health in Vero Beach. The Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, developing a high-quality early childhood system for all children in Indian River County. Hi, this is Jennifer Toby from Treasure Coast Compassionate Care, serving all of the Treasure and Gulf Coast. We provide a wide array of services, including driving our clients to their physician, shopping, cleaning, making beds, reminding clients to take their medication, providing hygiene assistance, personal laundry and bed linens, preparing and serving meals, providing respite care for caregivers, helping with correspondence, providing socialization, friendship, and support going on walks and encouraging and participating in stimulating activities. So call us today for an in-home assessment at 772-226-7072. 772-226-7072 or visit us at treasurecoastcompassionatecare.com. talking about having your own radio or TV program, then you should talk to Planet Vero. Here's why we're the best. Your show will be heard on three local iHeartMedia stations, plus worldwide on the iHeartMedia network. And you can choose our live stream option, which gives you six cameras and professional television studio quality production that's delivered to many social media platforms. Call us for a free, no obligation on-air interview, and we'll show you the power of Planet Vero, radio and TV. That's 772-778-2832. Follow the powerful Rush Limbaugh show on Planet Vero Radio. Take advantage of the amazing opportunities on social media like Facebook and YouTube with a live stream broadcast. Call 772-778-2832. It's the future of marketing. It's Planet Vero, and it's brought to you by Idea Garden Advertising. Visit planetvero.com. We're back to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of KRC. And with me today in the studio is Vance Alupas. Vance is the CEO of the Children's Movement of Florida. Vance, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Torres. And thank you for sharing your insights about the return on, on investment right before the break. I think that's really important. We were talking about the moral imperative versus the practical imperative. Um, I think that's something that we need to articulate and keep sharing that with folks who are interested in the early childhood sector. Absolutely. And, and, and if you ever get the opportunity to hear our, our board chair, David Lawrence, speak, he says that all progress in human history has come 
has all all progress in human history has required pushing and shoving, mm. right? You 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 work hard to build partnerships. You work hard to to be nice, but at the end of the day, it's it's an insistence. It's a it's a commitment to a cause. And um, you know, we were talking at, at at break. If if it really was just about loving children, then again, we would not be climbing these mountains. And we've made progress. And and this is what I like to to stress to to our team and to folks that I speak with. We've made progress. Don't we, let's not let's not um you know ignore that. But current kindergarten readiness scores show that about a third of all children going into kindergarten in Florida are not ready. Yeah. So if you look at the 200,000 children who are being born into our state every year, you're, you're talking about 70, 65 to 70,000 children who are being put into the public education system, and they're not ready to be there. And every year that we do not move the ball down the field in terms of increasing the quality of our pre-K program, increasing the quality of our subsidized child care, ensuring that children have access to health care, uh, supporting parents... Those are 70,000 lives that may have a, a, a far different um, future than we would want for our own children. So, you know, that, that, should, be our, that should be our ongoing uh, pursuit and the ongoing reminder of the urgency of this situation. Vance, you mentioned progress. So let's talk about some of the accomplishments mm-hmm. that the children's movement has had in, in recent years. What can you share with us? So, so we really focus on, on three fronts. So early childhood education, health access, and parent support. Uh, on the health access front, when I first got involved in this work in 2010, there were about 800,000 children in Florida who didn't have access to health care. Um, I find that unconscionable. The, you know, for me, for somebody who, was, who moved to Florida because of, because of health issues, mm-hmm. I can't imagine what it would be like to raise a child without being able to take uh, him or her to a pediatrician. So we have seen an enormous amount of progress in that space. Um, there are now a little over 200,000 children who don't have access to health care. I don't think any of us should stop until every child in Florida has access to health care. But clearly, we're moving in the right direction. And part of that has been our ability to identify particular populations that were precluded from accessing. So we helped pass a bill a few years ago that allowed children of, of lawfully residing immigrant children in this state to not have to wait five years to access Florida kid care. For, for the longest time, if you, if you moved here from, my wife is from Brazil, if you moved here from Brazil and you were living here legally, um, if, you were, if you were eligible for subsidized health care because of, of what your parents were making, you were forced to wait five years before you could actually enroll. So you may not, assuming you came here the day after you were born, you may not see your pediatrician until you're in kindergarten. So removing that barrier um, opened up access to tens of thousands of children in our community and across the state. Um, on, the, on the front of early childhood education, uh, you have seen tens of millions of additional dollars going into school readiness and into pre-K, uh, really more because of the the demand for the programs. We would like to see an in, uh, a greater increase in the amount spent per child. So one of the things we will be pushing this year is to, is to see the VPK um, allocation be put to pre-recession levels because we're currently spending $67 less per child than we were uh, when the program first started in 2005. Uh, that is not progress um, by any stretch of the, the imagination. Uh, we have seen last year from a representative from this part of the state, Representative Aaron Grohl, um, passed perhaps one of the most significant pieces of early childhood legislation in, in my time that really was a major first step to putting quality into our, our subsidized child care across the state, uh, insisting on standards, making sure that, that, that our tax dollars are going to programs that have meaningful outcomes for children. And on, on the parent front, I think there is nothing more important in the success of a child than a, than a caring and knowledgeable parent or caregiver. And what, what I have always believed is that every parent loves their child. I want to I live in a world where, where every parent loves their child, and that is my fundamental belief. I, I parent the way I was, I was parent, you know, the way my, my parents parented me. So, you know, I think I, had, I, I think I had great parents, so I hope I'm a good father to my, for, to my daughters. But a, a lot of, of what we do as parents is, is learning on the go or learning from our friends or reading what we can. And what we have really tried to do is find ways to help parents access resources so they can make the best decisions on behalf of their children. So Help Me Grow, which is a program available in this community, has been a program that we've been strongly in support of. Uh, and it's basically a care coordination system that, that parents can contact to figure out how do they, how do they answer the questions that they have um, relating to their children's development, and then how do they get connected to the resources in their community. And it's really those three pillars that we think are at the center of child development. And, and we have seen progress, but again, there's still there's still much more to do. And those are the three pillars that you're using to lay out the foundation for your 2019 agenda, which yes. you just recently released. Yes, correct? Re- released it yesterday. And is there anything else that's specific to that agenda that you can share with us? Things that you're pursuing? So the the, the VPK um, 
allocation is very important because I think what we need to show is that there is going to be a continued investment from the state in in early learning. Uh, we would like to continue to see progress on Representative Grawl's bill because without quality, you're not going to have real results for children. Uh, from the healthcare perspective, we would like to see uh, streamlining, streamlining and efficiencies placed into the Florida Kid Care Program so that children do not fall out of the program. That if they if their parents move in and out of eligibility, or if you know you know the the program has Kid Care has four different programs. Um, we don't have enough time on this interview to go through all of them, but at the end of the day, we need to make sure that children are not falling out of the system. And continue to expand, help me grow. Uh, there are 67 counties in Florida. We're currently in 35 of them. Mm-hmm. Parents in all 67 counties need to have access to those resources. Absolutely. And here in Indian River County, we work very closely with 211 Help Me Grow. Awesome. And Thank we, you. we appreciate um, their partnership. Vance, how can people get involved with um, the movement? So uh, I would love for folks to go to our website. It's www.childrensmovementflorida.org, all run together. Uh, take some time to to look at our website, learn about who we are. Our our contact for this part of the community is a, a wonderful woman named Cresha Sendone, whom you know, mm-hmm. uh, and she is up here um, with uh, with real with re- real frequency, uh, hosting community events. And we just want folks to be educated on the issues, and we want them to be a part of this conversation. And we believe at the end of the day, the progress that Florida needs is not going to be the result of any real top down model. It's going going to be a bubbling up of the grassroots to say, this is a priority for Indian River, this is a priority for Martin, this is a priority for Hillsborough, Pinellas, Duval, and all of us coming together and insisting that the state move forward in a meaningful way on behalf of children. So I would encourage people to go to the website, they can email me, all of our contact information is there, uh, and let Cresha know you want to be involved and we will make sure that that you are engaged um, with our work here in the community. And for those of us who live here on the Treasure Coast, is there anything that we should be on the lookout for that that's coming or that is happening in terms of the movement here in the Treasure Coast? Well, my understanding is you're having an event with our board chair coming up. So I don't know if that was a, a plug, but um, our, our board chair just released a, a book, his autobiography, that talks about his work with children. Um, and if you have the details, we'll put them on our website, but would love for, for folks to come out and get to hear from him. There are a few people as inspirational as Dave Lawrence and... Uh, once you hear his message about why this is so important, you're going to run through the wall um, and go out there and, and fight on behalf of children like you've never fought before. Absolutely. And for our listeners and our viewers, that event is slated for April 25th. It's going to be at the First Presbyterian Church. There will be more information on our website and our Facebook page, but I think it will be a great opportunity for folks to really get involved in the children's movement and what's happening and really understand a lot of what you shared today in terms of the early childhood sector, that moral imperative, the practical imperative, and just really what all of us need to to do. And I have to commend you really focusing on parents, parents, which is something that we try to do at KRC too. We like to say that parents are a child's first and best teacher. And we keep seeing that all the time. And parents are really hungry for information. And, and we're really providing that service to them. So thank you so much for joining no, me. Thank Vance. you for what you do. And until next time, this has been Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn.